I'm Aprajitha, and I'm here to make the invisible visible so we can do better with inclusion. Now, the first step is to look inward, like the peacock on my logo, so we can all see and show our whole selves. But more on that soon. I have two brain injuries. I was a 26-year-old PhD candidate when I cognitively died from my second one. When I was brought back, I had to recover on my own with no support. Insurance issues rendered me invisible. This is why I'm here today to tell you that not everyone with challenges looks, well, challenged. Many look like you and me, with no visible markers of our unique needs and issues. 397.8 billion are current annual disability healthcare costs. My bill, from my experience, was estimated at over a quarter million dollars without rehab. It would have been cheaper for me to stay dead. Instead, I manage five conditions every day. One third of the U.S. population has a disability or chronic illness. 96% of us have invisible challenges, and those are only the reported and diagnosed numbers. There are millions of us with thousands of conditions. Many are mental health and well-being challenges that are difficult to recognize and diagnose because they are so unpredictable. Now, the ADA does protect people with disabilities from legal discrimination. It says that accommodations should be made without duress to the employer. In practice, this often stops at accessibility ramps and elevators. It is definitely not enough. Because it puts the burden on those of us with invisible challenges to either hide our needs and suffer, or share our truth and be separated from within. Maybe even face negative consequences. That's not authentic inclusion. We see this in top-down initiatives, diversity initiatives that hold leadership and employees to different standards and trainings, and treat mental health as only an outcome, a box to check off, an afterthought. When we do this, we're actually increasing microaggressions. We're perpetuating a silo culture of invisibility and groupthink, and we're creating disconnect between people. We're creating exclusion. This is because the expectation is to conform to the group, blind allegiance. We put group goals before well-being, as if health is less important than work. This model and framework can't be sustainable because it goes counter to human nature. What we need is convergence, where everyone from any path and walk in life or health can align their own goals with the group goals. They can contribute and come together while still being themselves, like how these, you know, feathers looked to converge for a beautiful peacock fan. How do we achieve this? We create belongingness. We make mental health the foundation of the culture. And every action towards inclusion. Every action, every person's core is their well-being. From this core, we align our identities, values, goals, passions, and purpose, and we determine our ideas of success, productivity, and performance. When we start with well-being, we can see the symbiotic relationship between the individual and the group. We can see the overall group is a dynamic and fluid organism. Its health is deeply interconnected to the cores of its people. This creates a beautiful synchrony where everyone can be embedded across all levels: self, team, group, organization, and community. And because the individual is at the center, they are deeply invested in making sure these interconnected spheres work well. Now, when we do initiatives and trainings toward alignment, toward group goals. We start at a position where the individual has the resources and the capacity to willingly participate and thrive. This way, unnecessary initiatives and their costs can be better controlled. When an organization truly and deeply appreciates its people's well-being, the desired outcomes of productivity, performance, and retention automatically soar. It creates a healthy organization that is agile and authentic, and values its people while sharing goals. Leadership and employees can be adaptive to change, be more impactful, and make a difference. The seeds that. Get what they need are the ones that grow into colorful forests. So here's my call to action for everyone: 
Let's focus on mental well-being so we can create more inclusive, healthier, and better futures for everyone. Thank you. Thank you.